welcome back guys now so far we have seen about gfr and how gfr can be affected we have seen how afferent arteriolar constriction and dilation affects the gfr as well as we have seen how efferent arteriolar constriction and dilation affects the gfr now let's talk about a very important topic which is regulation of the gfr which means that gfr can be regulated who is going to regulate the gfr your kidneys the nephrons can regulate the gfr now we know what exactly is the normal gfr normal gfr is 125 ml per minute we know that but for example let's take a situation something something like this if gfr is falling down from 125 ml if it is falling down to 70 ml or 80 ml your kidneys are intrinsically having a capacity or i should say nephrons are having a capacity by certain mechanisms they can bring up the gfr again to 125 ml or if gfr is increasing so much then the gfr will be brought back to normal so what i am trying to put into your mind is your nephrons can regulate the amount of glomerular filtration okay how this is going to be achieved now we will discuss guys before that you need to know about something known as juxta glomerular apparatus see we know this structure is the glomerulus okay these are the glomerular capillaries and here is the bowman's capsule together it's known as a glomerulus or glomeruloid body now juxta means what side so side to the glomerulus you are having an apparatus or i should say a three different types three main important types are cell main important types of cells are there which are known as juxta glomerular apparatus juxta means side to the glomerulus this apparatus is there which is made up of a three important types of cells and what are those cells see the first group of cells which are presenting on the earliest part of the distal convoluted tubule so these cells so these cells where they are sitting they are sitting on the early part of the dct so these cells are known as macula densa okay now the second group of cells which are present over here so what are these cells these cells are nothing but the modified smooth muscle cells of afferent arteriole now we are taking this as afferent arteriole now blood is coming in this direction and exiting in this direction okay so this is afferent arteriole the smooth muscle cells of afferent arteriole are modified and now they are these, these are specialized cells what is the name of those cells they are juxta glomerular cells okay juxta glomerular cells so macula densa is completed juxta glomerular cells are completed now in between them there are certain extra mesangial cells are also present now all these three together known as juxta glomerular apparatus now if someone ask you juxta glomerular apparatus is made up of how many cells three different types of cells what are they juxta glomerular cells which are nothing but the modified smooth muscle cells of the afferent arteriole now they can also be called as granular cells okay now the second type of cells are present on the early part of the dct also known as macula densa we will see what is the function of these cells later but for now the second type of cells are macula densa and the third type of cells are nothing but the mesangial cells okay extra capillary mesangial cells these are three different types of cells now let's talk about one more important point about these extra glomerular mesangial cells these extra glomerular mesangial cells are also known as lasik cells or polkesin cells okay now guys let's see how auto regulation of gfr happens guys let's take an example where gfr is abnormally getting increased what should be done now whenever the gfr is going abnormally up that gfr need to be brought back to normal for example now gfr is getting increased whenever gfr increases what happens more amount of fluid is getting filtered if there is more amount of fluid automatically in this fluid more amount of sodium and chlorine is there now more sodium chloride is coming into the proximal convoluted tubule it's coming into the loop of henle ascending limb of loop of henle and it is going to the distal convoluted tubule okay now this sodium 
is going to the distal convoluted tubule. Who is sitting on the early part of distal convoluted tubule? In the early part of DCT, there are the specialized cells known as macula densa. And these macula densa cells, very very important, macula densa cells are very much sensitive to the sodium levels. If more sodium chloride is reaching the macula densa, what happens? Now this macula densa is activated. When macula densa activates, it is going to release a substance known as adenosine. We have already seen that adenosine is a afferent arteriolar constrictor. Now this adenosine will, ca will cause afferent arteriolar vasoconstriction. If afferent arteriolar vasoconstriction happens, what will occur? Now afferent arteriole is constricted. So the amount of blood coming to the glomerulus is going to be greatly reduced. So automatically GFR will be reduced or I should say GFR will be brought back to normal. So if the GFR is going up, your nephrons especially the macula densa which is present on the tubule, it is going to communicate to the glomerulus. So, I can I say it as a tubuloglomerular feedback? Why I am calling it as a tubulo? Why? Because the tubule, especially the DCT, the macula densa cells, they are giving the feedback to the glomerulus for the reduction in the GFR. So, we can call it as tubuloglomerular feedback. Okay, when the conditions where GFR is increasing so much, it will be brought back to normal. Now, let's take one more condition where GFR is drastically getting decreased. When GFR is falling down, what your nephron should have to do? Your nephron should have to increase the GFR or I should say the GFR needs to be come back to normal. So, if GFR is getting low, what happens? The amount of sodium chloride reaching the macula densa will also be low. Okay. Now, when the amount of NaCl is reaching the macula densa is low, now macula densa is sensitive to sodium chloride. Now, macula densa will understand, okay, if low sodium is coming means, it means that GFR is falling down. So, immediately what macula densa will do? It will stimulate the juxtaglomerular cells. Now, these juxtaglomerular cells, now they are going to release renin. We have already seen that renin is going to act, uh, is going to convert angiotensinogen into angiotensin 1 and angiotensin 1 will be converted into angiotensin 2 with the help of angiotensin converting enzyme in the lip, uh, in the lungs and this angiotensin 2 helps in the production of aldosterone. This RAS pathway we have already completed. Now, at the end of the day, when macula densa is activated because of the low GFR, it is going to activate the juxtaglomerular cells. And these juxtaglomerular cells are going to release renin. Now, renin will help in the production of angiotensin 2. Now, what exactly is angiotensin 2 is doing? We have discussed angiotensin 2 is a efferent arteriolar constrictor, not afferent. Efferent arteriole is going to be constricted. So, whenever efferent arteriole is constricted, initially what will happen? GFR is going to be increased. So, whenever there is decreased GFR, that GFR will be again brought back to normal. Okay. So, this is how autoregulation will happen. Now, let's discuss about high protein diet, how it's going to affect the GFR guys. For example, there was this one person who is taking lot of proteins or he is consuming so much amount of meat. So, how GFR will be affected in this person? Let's please concentrate if, he's, if he is on high protein diet, he is going to have high amino acids in his blood. Okay, protein digestion will lead to increase in the amount of amino acids in the blood. It's very simple. Now, all these amino acids, just think logically and say, should you lose these amino acids in the urine? No. Now, these amino acids need to be reabsorbed. Okay, there are a lot of amino acids in the blood and these amino acids are freely filtered. We have discussed glucose and amino acids are freely filtered. So much amount of amino acids are there in the blood and so much amount of amino acids are getting filtered in the glomerulus. Now, all these amino acids are very important for the body. So, what should happen? All the amino acids need to be reabsorbed back. Now, one important concept remember glucose and amino acid reabsorption happens along with the sodium co-transport. So, if one amino acid is going back into the body or reabsorbing back into the body, sodium should have to go along with that. That is known as amino acid sodium co-transport. Even that it is the same for the glucose also. If you want to reabsorb glucose again back into the body, sodium should have to help in that process. So, sodium glucose co-transport need to be happen. Now, here also as there is as there are more number of amino acids, all these amino acids needs to be reabsorbed. At the same time, along with amino acid reabsorption, sodium need to be reabsorbed. So, 
lots and lots of sodium is getting reabsorbed in the PCT. If so much amount of sodium is getting reabsorbed in the PCT, what will happen? The amount of sodium reaching the DCT is going to be decreased. So, less sodium is reaching the macula densa. Now, macula densa is again going to be activated. Okay, macula densa will think, okay, if no sodium is coming means GFR is falling down. It will think like that. So, macula densa will immediately stimulate juxtaglomerular cells and juxtaglomerular cells will produce renin. Renin is helping in the production of angiotensin 2 and angiotensin 2 will cause efferent arteriolar vasoconstriction that will increase the efferent arteriolar vasoconstriction will cause increase in GFR. Okay. So, a person who is having high protein diet, his GFR will be increased. Okay. So, these are some important concepts related to the GFR and autoregulation of the GFR.